Hello, and welcome to Art Shell. I'm Craig Stover, and today I have with me Jill Bonifitz. Hi, Jill. How are you? Hi. Good. Thrilled to have you on the show. Can't wait to start sharing some of your works. So, like normal, I went online and uh, selected a few pieces of yours, well, in this case, multiple pieces, that I wanted to share with people uh, that I thought were just fantastic. Um, so, can you tell me what I'm looking at here? You are looking at porcelain vases that are um, inspired by an outsider artist named Eugene von Braunschenheim. Right. And we have a lot of his work, which is very different from this, but I am looking at his work all the time. And that's what led me to doing these. Since I'm not familiar with that artist's work, is it the appendatures that that you're that you're being inspired by, or is it actual the, the form and and the and the feet? No, um, his or is it all very, of it? Very different, but they're very. Um, I guess the additions to the vases are influenced by him, although his work is re is really different. But the feeling is somewhat the same. And these are done. Uh, these are porcelain. These are porcelain with um, sulfates underneath, okay. which make the appendages uh, the bluish color. And the very front one, though, has does have glaze on it on the green part. So That's is why. this, it, yeah, is this considered a, a series? Is this one work, or are these just multiple pieces that you have that in one photo? Um, these are multiple pieces put okay. together. But I, right. have, I do do these in series, but the series are pretty large. Okay. Is, is this an ongoing thing? It was for many years, but not no longer. How do you, how do you know when you're finished a series? When I got tired of making them. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> I always, I love asking that question of artists because every artist has something, you know, a different way of doing it. And my favorite so far was actually a quote I just reread of Alexander Calder. They asked, how did he know when he was finished? And he would say, when the dinner bell rings. And I thought that was a, <laughs> that was a really good one. That is a good one. So um, these are magnificent. So you have a, a, a series of these. I assume this is also a series. It is a series, but not in the way that the vases are. The vases are seen together. These okay. are just. I did several of them at one time, but uh -huh. it's, they're one and only. Um, and this is this is also porcelain with an underglaze. This is porcelain with sulfate, same thing, sulfates underneath. And um, when I pour the glaze on the pieces, the way I pour it out makes some of those lines. I, I'm curious to know that when you're making, say, a piece like this, are you working with some rough ideas that you're that you're you're dealing with, or is it more of an experimentation that then results in something like this? For me, everything is an experimentation because I never know how they're going to come out. But I was very drawn to making a large. Uh, vessel like this. Um, I have always uh, made vessels totally different kinds, but the vessel form is one of my main things that I'm engaged with. And this is very, um, it's very light, very large, it's translucent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but the patterns of the, of the, uh, glaze and the sulfates are always a surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine so. So I have kind of a dumb question uh, because I, I've, I've asked this of, of other people who make work like this. Do you prefer to show these flat or up on a wall? Definitely flat. Definitely flat. Yes. I don't even know how you would get it on a wall, but I just kind of curious <laughs> just to see that. How that's I done. really feel it's I feel very strongly that my vessels, which are most of them are very large, um, belong on a surface so that you can see the form. And mm -hmm. when it's on the wall, you don't really see the form. Oh, 
So how, when you're talking large, how, how large is this piece? Well, Rough. I have a 20, a kiln that is 29 inches in diameter. Okay. So it's whatever I can get. That was one of my next being questions. Able to get my hands out. Right, right. You want to use suction cups to you know, get it out. <laughs> work. You actually, you asked one of my questions, which was, I was wondering if you had a kiln. Is the kiln in your studio? It's in my studio and it's electric. Oh, okay, nice. Have you always had a kiln? Since I've had my own studio, which has been for 38 years, I think. So I was thrilled to find these. I love these. I think they're absolutely uh, wonderful. And for some reason, I was thinking like they, this is going to sound, sound a little stupid, but they, they, I mean, immediately thought of like George Orr's pots, but modernized. Be ah. Because of the, just the four, how unique each of the forms are and just how sort of poppy these are. Where do these come from? How, how, how did these well, come about? Um, I'm not very good at throwing. Okay. And so a lot of these are thrown and then altered. Okay. And things added to them. Um, these are terracotta. Oh, okay. <laughs> with, um, it's really underglaze that's uh -huh. on. So they're matte. They're not shiny. And I had a great time doing them. And they look so fun. Like... They, they look were, happy, happy to be made. <laughs> they were fun. I just, you know, I made a series of these and um, I haven't really gone back to these. These were, I made them a while ago Amazing. and it's sort of, you know, there are a few more, but mm -hmm. it was just sort of something I did and then went on to other things. Wow, they, they look, they look so much fun. I, I really... I want to see more of these. <laughs> I, and I, may, I may go back, you know, and, and do more because they were fun. Yeah. <laughs> the, the other ones, like the, the first big blue plate, looked very serious, whereas these look like they just have a, a completely different vibe. I was so thrilled to see them in, yeah. in your collection of works. And Thank speaking you. of different within your works, I was also thrilled to see that you have these wire pieces. So how did these come about? The way these came about was, uh, it's kind of a story that is, it's real, but um, we needed a dish, a platter for our fruit, like a fruit bowl. And I made one out of clay and all the fruit rotted on the bottom. So um, I thought, well, what about something where there would be a lot of ventilation and somehow I came up with wire mm. and I had a, a hanger in my a wire hanger in my studio and I took that and I made a bowl and I brought it home put the fruit in it but that didn't work either because it made these ridges in the fruit and then it all rotted <clears throat> so I hung the uh, coat hanger vessel on my wall in my studio and I looked at it over the years and then I thought what about if I use some wire that was easier to manipulate and um, I just started making kind of vessels small yeah. ones first and then they got larger and then I got a commission to do a wire piece but it had to be um, hanging yeah. and so the way I started was I took some of the larger ones like this and hung it and added things to it. And then I, I ended up like some go on, I still do these and some go on the wall, some hang, some uh -huh. sit on a surface. And then I started recently, like the last couple of years, I started painting on painting some of the wires, which is really fun. That was my next question was to, to ask about is is it like an enamel that you're using? No, oh, it's it's acrylic paint that I have in my studio. Okay. And when uh, I first I saw that, these. Go yeah, ahead. I mean, it's very untechnical. Okay. <laughs> when I first saw these, my first thought was that they look like drawings in space. They, 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 yeah. Exactly. I called one of my shows drawing in space. Is it? Okay. Well, that makes perfect it's sense. Right on. 
<laughs> and then uh, you had a sort of a leap using the wire and the the clay at the same time to make these, which again, this, this kind of goes back to the fun for me. You know, I find these really interesting. So are these like the very first picture that we showed, are all these actually separate, but we're, we're, we just happen to be looking at multiples? Yeah, they are separate, yes. Okay. And I've shown them in different ways. I've shown them lined up in, in different groupings on the wall or sitting together. And they are usually in groupings, but when I'm making them, it's just the one that I'm focused on. So I, I noticed, uh, it took me a while to realize that the bases are clay. Yeah. So is that still... Uh, you grounding yourself in in ceramics still even though you're doing wire work or or was it just oh, is there a reason for it i started the when i was making them i made them on foam core because it's easy to stick the wire into the foam core and i showed them to a sculpture a sculptor friend of mine who said she thought the the bases were terrible Okay. <laughs> and and right. it seemed to be in general that's what people thought uh -huh. and i'm always asked do you mix your wire and the clay do you ever put them together yeah. so it sort of evolved i thought okay i'll try them with the clay yeah and it's got it's pretty labor intensive because i have to make them i make them with the foam core and then i have to make the bases and figure out the holes mm. so that i can after I fire them, I can transfer the wire to the, and I have to keep them all straight, you know, so I sort of line them up and number them on the bottom. But that's well, how it came to be. Well, you know, when, when I first saw these, of course, you know, going back to Calder, I can't help but think of his mm -hmm. wires. I mean, who, who couldn't? But the idea that you have a completely different um, sensibility, you're, you're using these, the, the forms are so different. They're so sort of abstracted and fun. Um, I really thought that they were um, quite interesting. So I want to end on this piece, speaking of which, because I think this is actually one of the more successful ones that you have. So the, again, these aren't super large, correct? They're, yeah, they're small. They're sort of manageable. And as yeah. you're doing this, as you're drawing in space, are you, do you also have an idea of what you want to do? Like say with this one, you were, seem to be preoccupied with the curly Q loops. You know, I'm inspired, but I get an idea, okay. but not specific. And I don't draw them or anything, but I just sort of have an idea. And then I start, you know, working on it and it just kind of evolves. Um, one thing I wanted to say is a lot of people have mentioned Calder mm -hmm. to me when they see these. And I have to say it never crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. well, I can so, see I can see that because your forms are completely different. And it's in its own, I only mention it because of the fact that when you talk wire sculpture, he was, you know, pretty much the big first leader in doing that kind of stuff. The same way that if you're going to make an abstract figure, everybody always says Picasso. So it's, it's not, I don't see the, I don't see that you're, you know, lifting or even inspired by what, by what he's doing, but I, I can't help but, but sort of compare between the two because it's just the same materials. That's all. You're right so, on, right on. I mean, you're. I I think your comments exactly um, are what's going on. Good. I'm I'm glad I'm right. <laughs> so I I want to start uh, our other part of the second half of the interview. I, I I'm curious to know one of the questions I love to ask artists is your very beginnings of art. Do you have any sort of moment when you were very, very young that was sort of your first exposure to art that you still remember to this day? Um, my mother had an art gallery when I was in junior high. Okay. She, she opened an art gallery in Philadelphia. And art was just always a big part of our life. Uh, I grew up with a lot of art. I heard stories about art from my mother, uh, go to her gallery. So it was just, and and my mother thought that artists were the greatest people. She mm -hmm. thought they were the best. <laughs> I had all that going yeah. around my head. What kind of work 
did she show, if you don't mind me asking? All different, everything, all different kinds of work. Um, she showed famous artists. She showed some Philadelphia artists. She showed Aborigine work. Interesting. Art work. She was, I'm assuming that yeah. that helped inspire your understanding of art. Yes. I yeah. mean, it, it did. It was part of our life. And, so, um, yeah. So at what point did you know that you were going to become an artist? Well, I majored in college in psychology. Okay. But I took a course in the, I went, I was at Columbia and I took a course in the village with a potter. And like everyone, I wanted to throw pots. I wanted to work on the wheel. I think that's how all potters probably start. Right. And so I, I took a class and I loved it. And then I went to Greenwich House Pot Pottery. I think that's the name. I took classes there and I took art classes at Columbia. Uh -huh. But after college, I um, worked with neurodivergent children mm -hmm. and um, teaching. But I always had art in my life. I was always taking classes. And then after I had my own children, I went back to art school, to Moore College of Art. Interesting. So I'm kind of curious, you know, I usually ask artists who 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 taught you these processes that lit the fire. Could it, Might it be the children that you work with that really lit your fire? They definitely, I still have some of their artwork. You yeah. know, they didn't want it. They didn't want to take it home. Right. So I have their artwork, and I'm definitely, I love children's art. Yeah. It's, it is one of my sources. <laughs> yeah. How can it not be? You're so free. Yeah. They don't all have all that baggage that we're taught right. for some dumb reason. Um, when you're in your studio and you're going to make something new, you, you know, you, you, you feel it. What what sparks your creativity? What What gets you moving? When I walk into my studio, it's just, it's like a cocoon or something. I'm totally there and I kind of walk around. I have a lot of table. I have a large studio. So I have wire work going on one table. I have clay on another. I have glazing on a, another area. And I just kind of meander around. And, okay. You That's know, your methodology to just work on multiple things at yeah, okay. and I know some things I have to get done, so that's probably okay. what I'll start with. But and sometimes I only have an hour, but I'll okay. still it's still important to me to be there. Is just seeing the work and that needs to be done enough for you to get motivated to do it? It's walking in the room. Something turns on, okay. All right. and I I am motivated. That's, it's that's partly fantastic. is the atmosphere I have. Uh -huh. Um, I have a few paintings that I've done. I have some of my calligraphy hanging up. I have uh, pictures of my grandchildren. I, you know, it's very, right. I've been there so long. So it's the space and, itself has like an energy that you just yeah. tap into. Yes. That makes it's perfect really, sense. really, really important in my life. Um, do you ever, you know, it's just one more question about this. Do you ever find inspiration outside of your studio that, that you then bring into it? Say, you know, reading or nature or something like that? Nature, um, specifically like plants or leaves or um, branches from a tree, that kind of thing. And I incorporate it in my work. I mean, I have one table that has a bunch of dried orchids. It has berries and twigs and that kind of thing so and then I often use that in those those small sculptures so some of your uh plate forms I guess are are quite large larger uh but a lot of your works have sort of an intimate scale to them it's a very like the conversation is very intimate when you're looking at it as a as a viewer have you ever had a desire to work larger than your kiln can handle, like really big? You know, I often get comments that the small sculptures would be great large and like 
outside in front of a building or, you know, something They'd have like a completely that. different meaning and feel to them. But I'm just not drawn towards that. Yeah. They are intimate and that's part of it for me. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I'm, I'm, I, I totally understand that you lose a lot by scaling up. Um, so you've been making work for quite a while. It's so weird. my my obvious question is is looking back, uh, how has your creative process changed over the years? Um, that's an interesting question. Has it has it all has it been a gradual change, or have there been times when it's been like completely all right? I'm going to do something way out of the box now. I think when I started working in Wire that that was a break. And that was like um, at least 20 years ago, probably mm -hmm. 25 years ago. And um, that was a change. But I think I'm still more associated with clay, mm -hmm. which is it, fine. To me, they're both equal. I mean, they're both important to me and I want to make both things. I would say that one trend is that my work has gotten probably smaller. I don't do, except for those, um, that large porcelain low vessel. Mm -hmm. I don't really work very large, although, but in the wire, I do. The wire, in fact, I try and work large and mm -hmm. it's challenging. Um, I'll have to think about that question. I, <laughs> you know, well, one of the I things I have, I have uh, older work in my uh -huh. studio. But it all seems to have the same vibe or it hangs together, at least for me. Yeah. Well, it's all, it's still your your risk making it, it's still your brain. Right. So I can understand that there's a connection there. Um, so the, 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 it's funny that you said smaller because I do appreciate small work. And, I, and when I saw your work for the first time, my first thought was, oh, these are things where it's like one viewer at a time. You know, you can't, <laughs> it kind of ruins it if you have multiple people looking at it. So that's how, that's how personal I, I see these smaller things. When, when you're making work, do you think about your audiences at all? Or is the work more for you? I definitely want it to be out in the world. I want people to respond to it. But when I'm making it, it's all me. Mm. I'm, I'm not thinking at all ever about when I have a show, you know, I have to think about how I'm going to install it and how the pieces are going to be viewed. But that's very specific to the mm -hmm. state where mm -hmm. I'm in the show. So then I do think of, I'm still thinking of how to make the work look its best. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to have your audiences walk away with something very specific about your work? Or are you happy with open open interpretation both okay you know however people want to deal with it um is good okay yeah well, sometimes well, artists well, are very well, like well, specific yeah right <laughs> yay <laughs> that's a success when you're when you're making your work i'm curious to know what's going on in your head are you are you zoned out or are you so tuned in I'm very tuned in and I'm tuned in to be sure that I'm taking doing something that I like that this is the way I want this piece to go mm -hmm. or um but then there are little surprises that come along the way mm -hmm. you know as I'm working I get an idea for the piece and then I sort of take a left turn or so your surprises come still come from your mind not necessarily happy accidents Right. Well, once in a while, it's a happy accident. Okay. <laughs> I'm open to any uh, input that there is. Uh, spoken like an artist. Uh, I I love to ask this question. I don't ask it of all artists, but some of your work does seem to have like a dreamlike quality. Uh, is is that just maybe your subconscious peeking through, or do you have you have you ever dreamed about your work, or do or do dreams enter into your work? Dreams do, my work does enter into my dreams because if I come upon a problem or um, 
Well, I did like the other night, I dreamt of trying to find a way to print a photograph of this wall that's in my studio. I was thinking on a shower curtain. Mm -hmm. I was thinking how cool that would be. <laughs> I have this wall in my studio that's in some of, um, I don't know if it's on my website, but I have a lot of dried plant material mm. hanging on this wall mm. on um, this very large board that's that's up there. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, I've gotten to the bottom, but there's still room. I can add another piece. <laughs> That's great. And so, I, and I have a great photograph of the wall. Okay. And so I thought that came from a dream, but when I woke up, I thought that's a great idea. <laughs> well, let's, we'll talk afterwards because I have a source where you can get shower curtains made. So we'll, we'll oh, talk great. about that. Um, so I have time for, unfortunately, just one final question. It, it always zooms by. Uh, simple question I ask almost every artist I interview. What does making art do for you? It fulfills me in a way that nothing else can really do. Other things fulfill me, but art in a very special way fulfills me. It makes me feel whole. Creating is at the bottom line. Doing something creative is just um, a life force for me. Mm -hmm. I get it. So that's fantastic. Well, Jill, I can't thank you enough for coming by today and talking with me. It's wonderful to hear about your, your works and your thoughts about it. Uh, thank you very much. It's and I also want to thank- I loved it. <laughs> I also want to thank everybody else who tuned in to watch uh, Jill's conversation today. We really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. That helps push our show forward. And if you have any questions that we we uh, would always love to hear from you, put them in the comment section. If we can't answer them, we can always move them on to Jill. So again, thank you for watching. And, and again, Jill, thanks for coming by today. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Take care.